So not long after being able to enjoy using the brilliant Optolong L Enhance filter, the Optolong L Extreme filter gets released. Now this is a duo narrowband filter that lets through seven nanometers of hydrogen alpha and seven nanometers of oxygen three. But is that as good as it sounds? My name is Rosine, this is Astrophysography, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my experiences and reviewing the Optolong L Extreme filter. So multi-band pass narrowband filters are still hugely popular and I don't think they'll be going anywhere anytime soon. This is because they allow color camera users to capture high quality narrowband imaging in one night with one filter rather than having to use multiple filters. And the reason they are so well optimized for color cameras is down to the color filter array, the Bayer pattern. I've explained this in length before in previous videos. And also if you want more information about it, you can check the link on my website link in the description below. But basically, here's Rose from a previous video. He's gonna break it down for you. So this means that all red, green, and blue pixels are gaining useful light. And like if you're using a standard filter like a hydrogen alpha filter, which is widely agreed to only pass through light on the red pixel. Using this filter was extremely similar to using the L Enhance filter. So the thinner band passes immediately made themselves apparent. I initially used this with a modified DSLR camera, the Canon 600D. You can see that video, I think, on this side here. But that was in the height of summer as well, and the thinner band passes and less light getting through of this filter meant I really had to push that data, push the ISO, push the exposure times in heat, which meant a lot of the fine details was just flat out destroyed to thermal noise. So that was one immediate downside I found using a more narrow bandpass filter with an old DSLR camera. Now really it was only when I started using my cooled camera, the Zoho ASI 071MC Pro, that's when I really, this, this filter was able to really come into its own. I mean, this is my own personal experience here. I'm not saying you need a cooled camera to use this filter, but during summer it just worked out better for me that way. Now the Optolong L Extreme filter has some really great separation of DSO to background sky. The narrow hydrogen alpha and narrow oxygen three wavelengths really team up very well to absolutely crush light pollution on emission nebula and supernova remnants. Now, it being a narrowband filter, you do limit yourself to these kind of targets. You can't really go shoot galaxies with this or star clusters and things like that. So there's one downside, but you're gonna have that downside with any narrowband filter. You can probably get some hydrogen alpha detail out of large galaxies like the Andromeda galaxy, um, things like that, but it's more well suited to those emission nebulae and your supernova remnants. And because this filter is so high quality, transmission of at least 90% or more, you don't really lose any more light transmission due to its construction and its coatings. Now, because I got this filter during the height of summer, one of the best targets in the night sky for a filter that lets through HA and O3 is the Veil Nebula. It's low hanging fruit and it's easy mode, but for initial testings in high temperatures, I thought it was a good thing. You can see that video in the linked card. I believe I'm pointing to the right side. I never remember. And as I mentioned, I did use it with the cooled dedicated camera. I used that on the Heart Nebula. The result was simply mind blowing. I was so amazed at the picture I got of the heart nebula shooting through the yellow stream. Now I live in Bortle 6 skies, so I'm not in terrible light pollution, but it was definitely, the image just popped out. You may have seen that video, I'll link it up there but the result was great. The l -Extreme filter has been a really, really great filter. Great detail, great separation to background sky. The l -Extreme is comparable to the l Enhance, but like all things, it's not without its faults. And I have noticed some things that didn't sit right with me with this filter. The biggest issue I found with the l -Extreme filter is around some stars, I found halos. Now this is bizarre though, because it seems really inconsistent about how these halos appeared. So here's a picture of the cave nebula and you can see that the stars look okay, but if we punch into this star here, you can see the bit of the halo around it. So if we move over now to Cassiopeia, to the bright star Navi, and we look at this 10 minute long exposure of this bright star, you can see there are no halos around it. And this is the kind of star that you would expect to find halos around. But if you look around other parts of the image, you can see halos. Again, with the Veil Nebula, Look at the main part of the Veil Nebula, it's fine, but if we go down a bit, you can see halos around stars. 
So bizarre and a bit inconsistent. I'm not really sure what to make about it, but I have found them and I'm going to report about it. Also, as I alluded to earlier, I found this filter to be far too harsh with older DSLRs. The, as I mentioned, the Canon 600D is a DSLR from 2011. That was my experience with it. It was not friendly to a DSLR, but worked really well with a dedicated camera. If you have a newer DSLR or a mirrorless like the Canon EOS RA or something, your results may vary. They might be more suited, their newer sensors, etc., better noise profiles. But with old DSLRs, I wouldn't really recommend it. Now, maybe it'll be better in the winter, but I may not have the filter by then, and I can only report on what I got. And although I've only had one proper image out of it, and that was the Heart Nebula with the O71, <laughs> to be honest, you, I, the results spoke for itself. You've, I really didn't have to work very hard to pull detail out of the images. Here, look at this. This is an unfiltered shot with the O71MC Pro. There's not even an IR cut filter on us, even though it would have needed it for this occasion. This is of Seda and the Butterfly Nebula. Look at this detail, or lack thereof. This is a broadband filter shot of the same area. This is the IDIS NGS1 filter. Some details you can just about begin to see. And this is with the L Extreme. And all these pictures were shot on the same night, same equipment, same exposure time, same gain. These are raw photos as well. I've done no, no editing to them. They're not even debayed. So this is what the camera was seeing through the filter. And if you can just compare the detail to the other filters, it's absolutely insane. There is so much detail coming through. It's actually amazing how good this filter can be. Also, being a duo narrowband filter, you can split the channels, the hydrogen alpha and the oxygen three out and make HOO bicolored images or imitation Hubble palette images, which I've done with the Heart Nebula. Here you go. I keep meaning to do a tutorial about this. It's in the works, it's coming, I promise you. And now to answer the question that you are probably thinking of that I've been asked lots and lots and lots of, L Enhance or L Extreme? If you're using an older DSLR, like a Canon 450D, a Canon 600D, equivalent Nikon or Sony models, I'm going to actually point you to the L Enhance filter. As I mentioned earlier, the L Extreme is a bit fierce for these older cameras, and you just have to really push them hard. That said, if you're using a cooled camera and you don't mind the occasional inconsistent halo appearing, then L Extreme, definitely. I would point you to the L Extreme filter. Also, if you're living in very heavy light pollution, I'm thinking of Bortle 8 or 9, also, I'm going to point you to the L-Extreme filter. At the time of this video, the 1.25 inch Octolong L-Extreme will cost you £179, whereas the 2 inch version will set you back £239. At this point as well, there's no DSLR clip-in version available. However, when I last did my review on the L-Enhance, the clip-in version shortly followed. So if you want a clip-in version, be sure you let Optolong know about this and maybe they will do a run of them. Thanks very much for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this video, well, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, then you know what to do. And consider subscribing for more reviews such as this. And let me know down in the comments below, are you a big Nebula imager? And are you looking at the L Enhance or the L Extreme filter? Drop me a message. Till next time, it's time to say clear skies everybody. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.